Let's talk about security management planning in this video. The ultimate goal of security management planning is to create security policy and implement it and also enforce it. A uh, nice thing about security policy is that it provides clear direction for all levels of employees in a hierarchy of an organization. The most effective approach in terms of security management planning is top-down, not bottom-up, meaning the senior management needs to initiate security management planning and should be responsible for security management in general. When you think about it, it makes a perfect sense because if you have a security policy that's not supported by your senior management, nobody will really follow the policy or comply with the policy. The security team or department enforcing security management planning or security policies have to be autonomous to be effective and should be led by a designated chief security officer reporting directly to the senior management so this way it can be free from many political or politically motivated activities in the organization. So let me further elaborate on this top-down approach. We talked about the senior or upper management being responsible for security management in general in the previous slide and the senior or upper management people they have to take security management planning as sort of a business operations issue and take their responsibilities very seriously in terms of uh, security management planning. So their job is really initiating and defining the security policy. The role of the middle management people is to turn these security policies into standards, baselines, guidelines, procedures, and so on to provide more details and guidance in terms of implementing these security policies. And then the operational or frontline managers or security professionals are responsible for implementation or the implementation of security policies. And of course, end users are supposed to comply with these security policies. So the roles you see here demonstrate this top-down approach. The roles played by these different stakeholders in the security management planning demonstrate the top-down approach I just described. So when these security policies are being developed, since senior management people are not experts in information system security and assurance, there needs to be a team of practitioners helping the senior management people with developing these security policies. So we call this team of people a policy development team. So as I said, they help senior management with the uh, development of security policies. I mean, that's their core mission. Another thing they need to do is to educate senior management on risks, liabilities, and exposures that still remain after or even after implementing these security policies because there's no perfect security. So I said security management is the responsibility of the senior management people and what summarizes 
their duty very well is this phrase due diligence and due care due diligence means before you jump into any action doing your homework especially in terms of planning and doing research so that you don't make any mistakes so doing your homework just like the old saying goes looking before you're leaping we can call this due diligence so to be able to make an informed decision you have to do your research which is due diligence so same applies to security so for example things like setting up a security policy developing a security policy is considered due diligence due care means mainly a follow-up on your due diligence or planning so if you have a security policy do you actually implement the security policy or do you actually enforce the security policy so whether you're actually doing something about your plans that's what we mean by due care so developing implementing and enforcing security policies really provide evidence of due care and due diligence on the part of senior management so that later on when an incident happens you can say that I've done everything I could do and in case you don't do this uh, due care and due diligence or due diligence and due care the consequences could be that you as one of the members of the senior management could be liable for negligence so it's very important to plan first of all and also execute the plan in terms of due diligence and due care the fundamental elements of security management planning include guiding the following activities defining security roles prescribing how to manage security deciding who will be responsible for different security roles testing effectiveness of the security measures described in the security policies also developing the security policies themselves analyzing risks and conducting security education and awareness campaigns when it comes to security management planning there are mainly three types of plans you could have one of them is strategic plan the other is tactical plan and another is operations plan in the strategic plan you typically define the role of security in your organization so security purpose is one of the things you specify in the plan and you actually say what you do in terms of security and then you have to assess how well you're doing and what you're doing so after the assessment you know where you are right now the status quo of your security operation and this provides sort of a planning horizon so that you can either improve what you're doing or maintain the status quo and typically in the strategic plans you identify goals and visions that are long-term in nature so what you're going to be doing to improve in general what's going on in your security operation and this type of plan is relatively stable and typically useful for about five years and it talks about security function 
in the context of the goals, missions, and objectives of the organization. So, why, for example, security is significant in the context of the goals, missions, and objectives of the organization itself. So, if it's a business-related organization, of course, the core mission of the organization could be something like serving the customers and making profits. Next type of plan is tactical plan and in terms of its lifespan we can call it a, a midterm type of plan because it's probably good for about a year. Compared to the strategic plans this type of plan provides more details on how to accomplish the goals and objectives specified in the strategic plans by prescribing and scheduling the tasks, specific tasks. So some of the examples of tactical plans include things like project plans, acquisition plans, hiring plans, budget plans, maintenance plans, support plans, and system development plans. Finally, we are ready to talk about operational plan. Operational plans are short-term in nature, probably the shortest term out of those three types of plans we have talked about so far. It gets updated often to comply with the tactical plan, either by monthly or quarterly, and these operational plans, they really talk about the day-to-day -day operations of your security organization or operations. So mainly in terms of how to accomplish various goals in the security policy, some of the topics covered in this type of plan includes resource allotments, budgetary requirements, staffing assignments, scheduling, implementation procedures, and so on. And the examples of operational plan include things like training plans, system deployment plans, product design plans. So in summary, the nature of desirable security management planning can be described as follows. First of all, the planning itself has to be ongoing in terms of development, maintenance, and actual use. So I mean you constantly develop new elements of your plan and make sure you maintain your plan and also you have to ensure that your plan is actually used. The plan should be concrete, well defined and clearly defined and it has to be also feasible. So the objectives in the plans they have to be very clearly described and something that can be actually implemented without any confusion. And you always anticipate potential changes and problems when you're dealing with these planning exercises. And these plans also serve as a basis for informed decision making for your organization as a whole. So plans are really important in the context of security management in general. And all these critical stakeholders, including the senior management people, have to be closely involved in the planning process.